Losing weight has been one of the most frustrating journeys I've ever been on. Um, I've officially started my weight loss journey back in 2019 when the pandemic pretty much first started. And honestly, it was such a wake up call for me. I was heading down a very bad road of unhealthiness. So from my journey from 2019 to now, I've learned essential things to really expedite your weight loss. I've been through a lot of ups and downs and twists and turns and crying and frustration. And if you feel stuck, if you feel like you will never lose the weight you want, then let me help you. Let me tell you what I've learned throughout these five years and what I do now to consistently lose weight. I'm not playing by the Hello and welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Danae Anaya and I discuss everything to really help you elevate to your best self and really help you live your best life overall. I'm here to help. I'm here to be here for you and I am looking forward to having you join my community. All right, so in 2019, I mean, honestly, throughout my whole 20s, I really struggled with my weight. Like, so when I was growing up, I was always super skinny um, and I never had to worry about weight loss. I never had to worry about what I ate, what time I ate, the, the soda I would drink, the juice I would drink. I've never had to worry about that because I was always very super skinny growing up. And um, I actually hated my weight when I was super skinny. Like even now, I still don't want to be super skinny. <laughs> like I just don't. And I used to really admire like thick women when I was younger, like the woman with like, you know, like the the curvy bodies and the, I just found it so admirable. I'm like, I can't wait to get older and look like that and really look more womanly. Um, and I did, you know, I definitely gained weight. I got thicker. And at one point in my life when I was about, I say like 19, 20 I was about 135 pounds and it was, I loved it, you know? Um, now, do I see myself wanting to get back to 135? Not necessarily, but, you know, around that time when I was 135, I felt great. I, I had a lot of energy. I didn't feel like so heavy. Like, you know, I didn't really have to, again, worry about anything. But then I went to college gained weight there, gained about 20, no, about 30 pounds. Uh, I was gaining like 10 pounds year after year. And um, it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, and, you know, that's when I, I've noticed that I was gaining weight in college and I really tried my best to leave and lose it there. But, you know, I was in college. I was around parties all the time. I was around drinking and food. Then I had like a roommate that was cooking a lot. So and then I would end up cooking a lot. So it was just a recipe for disaster. Um, and then, you know, by the time I left college, I was at a weight where I'm like, I wasn't happy, but it was like, OK, cool. I could work on this, right? And then I ended up in a relationship, gained weight from that, gained more weight from that because it was happy weight. And then, um, yeah, for ever since then, like, so when the pandemic hit in 2019, um, I was at my heaviest of heavy. I was 220 pounds. My face was so bloated. Um, I just felt so heavy. It was just one of the most hardest times of my life. And then at the time, I ended up finding out that I had a, a tumor in my knee from a lot of inflammation. So I was just overall like at one of the most worst health conditions of my life. And I said, I need to make a change. So in 2020, I decided to run every morning, like 7 a.m., every morning, top of the morning, I will put on my little K.O.R. sweatsuit, Keisha K.O.R., if you know, you know, my K.O.R. Uh, waist trainer, and then I would just go running every morning, um, and I would burn probably about 350 to 400 calories every morning. So thankfully, that helped, and that dropped me down to about, I say, 210, and then over time, I dropped down to 200, and then now I am at 190. Um, so anyways, my weight loss journey officially, officially started in 2019. I woke up one day and said, I can't keep living like this. <laughs> so um, yeah, like I, I got tired of like trying to like suck things in, suck my stomach in and pictures. And even though I still do that now, like it's not as bad. So um, yeah, like I, I just feel more confident in my body. I feel better. I feel lighter. I feel more energetic. 
I just feel better. Yeah, so let me talk about the things that I now consistently do to really consistently lose weight. And again, things I've learned since 2019. All right, for starters, you really have to get used to some kind of movement. I don't care how you do it. I have a dog, so I walk her about twice a day. Sometimes I'll give her about an hour walk in the morning, um, or sometimes I'll rotate. I'll give her a long walk in the morning and then like a shorter walk at night, or I'll give her a shorter walk in the morning and then a longer walk at night. So it really varies, but either way, I'm still going outside. I'm still walking. Um... And even if I do short walks, because sometimes I don't feel like doing an hour, I'm not going to lie. I still walk her twice a day, even if those walks last about 10 to 15 minutes. I still walk her about twice a day. So me, honestly, me having a puppy really helps me. It really forces me to go outside and have to walk. Like I, like, like you, you, you really have to go outside and walk your dog. Um, so that's super helpful. However, if you do not have a pet, you still got to keep the same mindset. Go outside, be in nature, at least walk about 10 to 15 minutes a day, twice a day, or do one long walk a day. Or, you know, if you are someone who goes to work, then I mean, that's probably calories within itself because, well, calories burning within itself because you probably got to walk around the office or walk around or walk to get to work or, you know, commute to work, whatever. But Make sure you are walking every single day or jogging every single day, something with cardio every single day. It's not only good for weight loss, it's good for your mental health. I can't even fathom like being in the house all day, every day, doing nothing. You know, I, I can't, I just can't. You need to understand like when you eat, you want to walk it off. You want to try to burn off as much as possible. You want to try to just get your metabolism going. It's just so many benefits with walking. Um, and I'm going to list them, but really, really, really get yourself out there. And then, you know, being in a house, being cooped up, I don't know if you live by yourself or if you live with other people. I live by myself. After a while, when you are just in the house, like it could get lonely. <laughs> like you need to go outside, you know, connect with people, network, like it's all in one. It's like an all in one um, thing. So really get yourself outside, go outside. Even if you got to go food shopping real quick, go to Walmart, go to the pharmacy, find a reason to go outside. So just be in nature, journal in nature, walk to the tree, like do what you got to do just to get your body moving. Number two, lift weights. Um, I've started lifting weights and it's one of the most, oh my God, I'm like, what, what have I been doing this whole time? Like, so it's one thing when you're losing weight, right? It's one thing when you are doing cardio and you burning the fat, but lifting weights will build that good muscle. It will build muscle and it will actually help you burn as well. It's great cardio as well. Um, lift weights, y'all. Like I, I can't even, what I do, I target a specific area of my body every day. So Monday is always glutes for me. Tuesday today, I'm doing my back. Uh, Wednesday, I'm doing, what am I doing tomorrow? Oh, abs. Um, no, I think Wednesday, I'm doing glutes as well. Thursday, I'm doing abs. Friday, I'm doing back again. I do something every day except for Sunday. Sunday, I have a rest day and I'll just do yoga. I mean, I do yoga every single day, but on Sundays, I really just take a chill pill. I'll just walk. I'll do yoga, a real chill kind of day. Um, or you can clean. Cleaning is burning calories within itself. Um, but yeah, so definitely lift weights. There's so many videos out there and so many things that will help you as a beginner. You can start off with five pound weights. I have five pound weights. I have 12 pound weights, 20 pound weights. So really get yourself used to lifting weights. You'll feel stronger. You'll feel more confident. You will just feel so good um, by the time you are done. And honestly, it's a stress reliever. Imagine yourself being mad, heartbroken, frustrated about something, uh, stressed, worried, any kind of negative emotions. When you lift weights, you just not saying your problems will go away, but you just feel like you're more in control. And that's the thing I love about weight loss is that you can control it. In a world full of like worried about control, you can control your weight. <laughs> you cannot control the government. You cannot control people. You cannot control people due to you or whatever. 
you can control your weight. <laughs> so when you work on your weight loss journey, like when you really start lifting weights, it will give you like this sense of confidence, this sense of strength. You feel better. You feel slimmer in certain areas. I promise you lift some weights today and you're going to feel more slimmer in that area or more bigger in that area. Whatever you're trying to work on, you work on your glutes, you're going to feel like your, your butt is big all day. <laughs> You are. You you do your back, you're going to feel like your back fat has melted away in your bra. Like, I'm telling you, lift some weights, y'all. It's like an automatic boost to your confidence the day of. And keep doing it. And before you know it, you'll get the results. You'll see the results. You'll feel the results. Um, And yeah, it's just up from there. <laughs> Number three, really try to work on intermittent fasting or any kind of fasting. You have to get your body used to not eating all the time, not being hungry all the time. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Y'all going to have to get used to being hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, like, you're going to have to get your body used to that. If you're always used to being full, if you're always used to eating, if you're always used to just snacking all day because you're getting a little inkling of hunger, you got to get used to just being a little hungry. I'm not going to lie. Like, you got to get used. If your stomach before you go to bed is bloated, like if you have like a big stomach before you go to bed, you ate too much. You ate too much in the day. You probably ate too close to bed. You need to like, you need to like, no, like you need to have a little bit of hunger in you when you go to bed. Not saying you got to be super hungry, but be satisfied. You got to eat until you are satisfied, not until you are stuffed. I know as kids, when we were growing up, we had our parents being like, oh, you better finish that plate or you can't go outside. You better finish all your food. Don't waste no food. Trust me. I, I get it. Like I'm, I, I, got some of that as well. But you have to reprogram your mind to realize that overeating and finishing everything on your plate, even when you are stuffed, is not, that's not cool. It's like gluttony. It's, it's not cool. If you're going to eat heavy, you better go on a, on a two mile, three mile run and lift some weights or and try to burn off whatever you ate because you got to have a balance, but we don't always have the energy to go on long runs and long walks. So in the meantime, you really got to try to like like control what you eat, like control how much you eat. And intermittent fasting will really help with that. Like you don't have to eat first thing in the morning. You can give yourself time, give your body time to wake up. You know, when you first wake up, try to have some water, have some some tea. A tea that I like to do every morning is lemon, honey, and ginger tea. And I put some collagen in it um, on an empty stomach. I saw this on TikTok. They said that this is better than Ozempic. So <laughs> I've just started trying it. So we'll see how this goes. But so far, so good. It's supposed to keep your metabolism going. And I'm going to list all the benefits of doing lemon, ginger, and honey tea. And again, collagen is optional for you. I add in collagen. Try to have like fruit on an empty stomach. So I like right now as I'm making this video, all I had was tea and watermelon. And I woke up like around 7 a.m. or 7.30 today. Usually I'm up around 7 a.m., 7.30. Um, so you really want to get your body used to like not eating right away. So I woke up like five hours ago and all I had was watermelon. And that's okay. Like you don't want to overly do everything all the time or be like, oh, I'm a little hungry. Let me make some pancakes with some bacon and sausages and, and eggs. Like, and you know, cool. You could do that if you want to, like, if you really a breakfast eater, then I get it. But if you're going to eat a heavy breakfast like that, I honestly probably wouldn't eat until dinner. So I would like fast the whole afternoon because I had a heavy breakfast. Um, so what you want to do, what I aim to do, I aim to eat like twice a day and that's it. I'll probably have like one healthy snack, but for the most part, I'm eating like two meals a day. So really get your body used to like fasting for hours at a time, like five hours, uh, four hours, like four or five hours. Get your body used to those gaps. You don't have to eat everything all the time. Like give your body a break to digest whatever you ate earlier. Like just give it time. Like, you know, it needs to break it down. And honestly, like you want to do that too, because if you suffer with gut issues, usually that means your gut is just tired as hell. Your gut needs a break. You need to let your gut rest. You need to let it like revitalize and recharge and be ready for the next meal. So if you are always eating and eating and eating, how how is your body going to really like 
you know, relax when you always put something in it. So work on fasting in the morning. Again, if you're going to eat in the morning, try not to eat till later on at night. Um, so really have that self-discipline, y'all. Really, really, really try to work on that. Number four, really try to aim for foods that have protein and veggie meals for the most part. Like really try to only eat protein and veggies. Like I love some shrimp with some broccoli. Um, I love some any kind of protein, tofu with some uh, kind of veggie, like try to really just eat protein and veggies without like the carbs and like the rice and the potatoes. And you could do potatoes. Like I'm not going to say don't do potatoes because potatoes are very filling, um, especially sweet potatoes. You can definitely do sweet potatoes as well. I love sweet potatoes. But for the most part, try not to eat so much carbs in one day. Like really try to restrict your carbs. Like try to eat little to no carbs every single day. For example, for breakfast, you can have like eggs and sweet potatoes, right? And then later on within the day, you can have like shrimp with broccoli or chicken with asparagus or steak with Brussels sprouts, like stuff like that, you know? Um, and then in between that gap, you did some walking. You you did some walking in between that gap before dinner. You probably had like one snack if it was killing you not to eat. Or you probably had some fruit, some watermelon, pineapple, whatever. Again, try to have gaps. But when you do eat, it's really at like a healthy and like a real like what your body needs kind of rate. So a typical day for me would be like, all right, waking up. I don't eat within the first three to five hours. Within those three to five hours, I have some tea or I have some watermelon. Okay, cool. I probably have nothing at all. Um, around 12 to 1, I'll probably eat like a light lunch. So I'll probably have like some oatmeal um, or I will have eggs with sweet potatoes. So I'm a late breakfast eater, by the way, if you haven't noticed. Eggs and sweet potatoes or I'll probably just straight go to lunch usually. Like go to lunch. So I'll probably have straight up like... Um, I don't know, whatever I could think of, like shrimp or broccoli or whatever, like I'll, but it will be light plates, very light plates, not, not like overbearing heavy plates. Like if I already had tea and watermelon and a light meal, I'll be fine until the evening or until like late afternoon, like I'll be fine. Um, then the afternoon comes, I'll probably have some fruit again. I'll probably have fruit, a pear, a watermelon, an apple whatever. And then I'll go into the night and I'll probably have my protein and veggies and then I'll call it a night. Um, I'll just call it a night. And you're going to see from there. You So you gave yourself breaks. You ate healthy meals, healthy, but filling meals because broccoli will fill you up. Trust me, it will. Like broccoli, you want to eat foods like broccoli because they take a while to chew. And you feel like you've been eating more and more. It's like you're tricking your brain. You like you have the fasting, you eat like a light meal, you probably have like a fruit or a snack in the afternoon, and then you have a light dinner. I'm telling you, if you follow those, <laughs> if you follow that, the weight would just start dropping off. But, and then mind you, in between the morning and the afternoon, you're also walking. You're walking about 10 to 20 minutes or whatever, or 10 minutes to an hour uh, a day, twice a day. I would recommend twice a day if you are really trying to expedite this weight loss. Me following this schedule has helped tremendously. <laughs> it's like became my new life is what I'm used to. It's what I became accustomed to and it works, you know? Um, but you gotta, you gotta follow that. You gotta be, you know, you gotta learn how to fast. You gotta learn how to eat light. You gotta learn how to fast. You gotta learn how to eat light and you gotta move your body. Fasting, eating light, moving your body. I'm telling you those three combos right there. Sensational. Sensational. <laughs> Um, all right. Now, number five, you really do have to limit anything that will give you the munchies. So if you are when you drink, you know, drinking the sugar, you really want to limit that alcohol. So it's OK to have fun and, you know, go out with friends or whatever. But realize that if you do not know your limit, you can kill your whole progress in one weekend. And I've been there so many times. So, 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 so many times. So when you go out with these friends, you either want to stay your ass home to avoid triggering yourself and to avoid messing up your progress, or you go out with your friends and really have those limits. Like if you usually get three drinks, get one to two. 
If you usually get shots, don't get shots or probably get one round of shots. On this journey, you have to like pull away from what you used to do when you was at a bigger and unhealthier size. Like you have to, you cannot expect to get different results with the same activity. You just cannot. And I've learned that the hard way. If you're going to go out, know your limit. Do not overindulge. Do not overdo it. You could give yourself a little bit just to satisfy your needs and then you stop. I know it's hard saying no. I know sometimes we meet up with people and they'd be like, come on, just have a shot. Come on, just have some. Like, trust me, I get it. But N to the O is your best friend saying N to the O. Like, and you know when it's your limit. You know when you're overdoing it. You know when you're messing up. You got to listen to yourself and be like, you know what? As bad as I want to do this, I do not want to get on a scale on Monday and be mad as hell at myself. So you know what? I'm going to say no. You know, like, I don't know about you, but like you good on the weekdays and when the weekend hit, you done messed up your whole progress. So you really have to limit and have some discernment and really have self control on those weekends and self-control when you go out and self-control like again do not deprive yourself too much because that's how you can overindulge and overdo it give yourself a little bit to satisfy your needs and then when you are doing too much stop when you feel like you are doing too much stop like you need to learn self-control when you learn self-control and weight loss your self-control will be so great for everything else because weight loss is really a mind game it's really a mental game like when your mental is right your body will follow so you have to control your mind when you control your mind you control your body and weight loss will become so much more effortless so much more easier so much more fun okay like you need to make it fun you need to make it like you're not torturing yourself you're just learning you're just transitioning yourself you're just reinventing yourself you're just changing yourself you're just elevating to like a different version of yourself yeah you still want to turn up you still want to have a wine glass you still want to probably smoke I don't know but like you need to know your limit now. If you smoke and get hella munchies, you probably got to either stop smoking and realize that the weed is taking over your brain. <laughs> like you have to realize like, am I really hungry or is this the weed talking? Like you really got to decipher the two. <laughs> so uh, really learn self-control, really learn to like, you know, when you are going to end up, when you are going to go out with friends or drink and whatever you're going to do, really, really learn your limit. If you do not learn your limit, then miss out. Don't do it. Because it's, again, it's not a, it's a worse feeling when you keep feeling like you're resetting every goddamn week. <laughs> so stop resetting every week. Okay. Like stop, stop messing up your progress. Like Monday through Friday, you was doing great. And then, you know, Friday night to Sunday, you ruined it. So really 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 like your friends can wait the events can wait things can wait i'm telling y'all it will still be there and you could pop out when you are feeling confident when you are healthier when you are better you can pop out in confidence more you can feel better about yourself you can wear some tighter clothes you can you know do whatever have you ever been through not knowing what to wear because everything don't look good like that's a terrible feeling. <laughs> like Sometimes you just want to go outside and wear whatever you want because no matter what you put on, you're going to look good. You're going to body that outfit. So like have that confidence, y'all. Like you want to build that confidence. Nobody wants to feel consistently insecure every time they go somewhere. Nobody want to feel like they're the biggest friend out of all their friends and now they got to like try to hide behind other people. Nobody want to feel like, you know, you did all this stuff on Monday through Friday and now you ruined your whole progress. And now you got to start all over again. And, you know, it's a shot to your self-esteem. It's a shot to everything you've worked on. It's just a shot. And you feel like you're not progressing. When you feel like you're not progressing, you start losing hope. And when you start losing hope, you just starting to give up. And when you want to give up, now you're back at square one and now you're not feeling the best at all. Like you're feeling low. And when you feel low, you accept low. You accept low relationships. You accept low friendships. You accept low jobs. You accept everything low. You got to understand the better you feel in your body and the better you feel in your mind, the better that you will not only attract, but the more that you will not just lower yourself. Like, you know, like when you feel good about yourself, you want the best. When you feel your best, you want your best. Think about the people who's not happy in their bodies, who is just not happy with their overall appearance. Usually, I mean, I don't know about you, but usually for me, when I see those kind of people, they accept less. 
They take bare minimum. They kind of just give what the world gives them because it's kind of like, well, I'm not good enough anyways. Who am I to question this? Who am I to think I'm better? Who am I? You don't know. No, 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 no. (laughs) No. So work on that self-confidence. Work on whatever is bothering you. You work on it. You will really start to have the confidence to go after whatever you want, whenever you want. However you want. It's just a confidence builder. I am way more confident now than what I was in 2019. Like way more confident. And again, I have things to work on. I'm not saying like, oh my God, I'm the perfect, you know, what I wear exactly where I want to be. But it feels damn good knowing that I made a 30 pound progress in, you know, five years. And some people make a 30 pound progress in a month. Some people do that. But with me, we all have different journeys. It took me time. And honestly, I feel like within those five years, it wasn't only a body glow up, a real slow body glow up. It was also a mental glow up. I had to work on my mental for my body to follow. So within five years, I have not only elevated my body and changed my body, I've also elevated my mind and changed my mind. I changed my mind first. And again, my body came along. So to do not rush your glow up. Do not rush the journey. It's going to take time. It's going to, and I still mess up. I still make mistakes, but all you got to do is revert back. Don't just keep making the same mistakes over and over and over and over and over again. You got to learn from your mistakes. That's how life is. I mean, like everything that you do, it ain't going to be perfect the first time. It's just not. You got to go back to the drawing board and see what you did wrong and tackle it. You know, like realize your triggers. What are your triggers? You know, realize what is throwing you off your game. Is it meeting up with people? Do you have no self-control? Do you emotionally eat? Like whenever you get stressed, do you find yourself emotionally eating? Like it's so many things that you got to figure out your triggers. When you figure out your triggers, it will really make you, you could go back to that drawing board and be like, okay, this is what triggers me. This made me gain five pounds. This made me gain 10 pounds. So I got to try to like minimize this or avoid this to go back to where I do not want to go back to. Again, your human going to mess up. Do not keep having no control over yourself to the point that you are messing up your own goals, your own progress, because no one else is living your life. No one else wants what you want. Everybody got their own things to worry about, their own um, weight loss to worry about, their own weight gain probably to worry about, their own bills, their own problems. Do not think that people are going to care about your weight loss and your goals the way that you will, because they won't. They won't. They won't. (laughs) So that's up to you to have self-control over you and realize what you want and what you are tired of and finally be like, I am sick of this. I am going to change this. I'm not even done with my weight loss journey, honestly. I am currently 190 and I really want to drop down to 170 and see how that looks. And if I don't like 170, then I'll probably go down to 160, 150. It depends. I personally do not want to be 135 ever again. I just want to be you know, like I like the thickness. <laughs> I like being thick. I'm not even gonna lie. I love it. I just want to be thick in the right places. That's it. That's that's all. Like, so my stomach gotta go. Like things gotta go. But ooh, I love being curvy. <laughs> I love it. Like, um, but yeah. So I'm still not doing my weight loss journey. Everything I'm telling y'all is things that I am literally doing right now at the moment, and things I've learned within five years. Yo, even if you don't look at my video, like even if you think I'm lying to y'all, look at other weight loss videos. We kind of all saying the same thing. Like it's really all kind of the same thing where they're going to at least say one thing or two things that I'm telling you right now. So it's really all the same thing. It's really about just putting it to motion, putting your plan to motion, sticking to your plan, standing on business and realizing that it's a minor sacrifice for long term fulfillment. I be I be loving what I be saying. And honestly too, like it's a temporary sacrifice, but that temporary sacrifice will become your new life. Because once you get used to losing weight or once you get used to a certain lifestyle, it becomes your overall lifestyle. Like I, this is my lifestyle now. It's not some kind of like, you know, oh, I'm just doing this. I mean, of course I'm crunching more down on weight loss. So I'm going to go a little harder opposed to when I want to keep my current weight. When you want to keep your current weight, you can just, you know, have little, a little less care 
Because, you know, all you want to do is really maintain your weight. But when you are working on losing weight, especially when you want to lose weight at a rapid rate, you really have to get used to the temporary sacrifice because it will become your long-term fulfillment. It will become your long-term body goals. It will become your long-term happiness. So I'm sorry that you're hungry. I'm sorry that you're probably going to be a little hungry. I know it's going to feel like withdrawals. I know you're going to probably be scratching your neck, like, you know, like this, but you got to get, <laughs> you got to get used to it. You know, you got to train your body to not be hungry all the goddamn time. You, you just got to train your body for it. Okay. People like to say, you don't got to be hungry to lose weight. No, um, you got to be a little hungry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you do. You do. I'm sorry. Like, um, you know, so yeah, just, I hope this was helpful though. I really, really do. I hope this was helpful. Um, again, I'm on this journey right along with you. You know, when your mind is better, when your body is better, you attract better, you go for better, you want better, you get better. So it all starts with you, y'all. Like if you're not happy with your life, you're not happy with your body, you're not happy, happy with your mindset, change it. You have the control to change it. Do not let anybody or anything get in the way of you elevating to the version of yourself that you imagine every single day. Or I know you are tired of looking at other people and being like, I wish. No, you don't have to wish anymore. You could just go get it, babe. You could just you could just go get it. All right. You are beautiful. You are amazing. You are everything you dreamed of. It's not another girl. Your dream girl is you. You are the it girl. You are everything and more. So when you realize your potential, when you realize how far you can go with just determination, discipline, self-belief, and self-confidence to know that you deserve what you want, you will be unstoppable. So... I love y'all. I hope this video was helpful. Um, be safe, be well, be amazing. And until next time, y'all, I love you. And bye. This is all the time.